Hey, it's Lucky. I treated myself to a drawing tablet the other day. I got this XP Pen Artist 22 second generation. It set me back about 500 euros, but I'm really loving it so far. I posted a couple of clips of me making game assets with it on Twitter and we got a great response. So I thought I'd make a quick video about it on what I've learned so far and how you can use drawing tablets in your game development workflow. So you can expect a couple of videos on this channel about hand painted models and textures. And that's what I wanted to get into today. Hand painted seamless textures. Uh, I've made a little pack. Of course I'm gonna leave a download link below so you can use them in whatever you want. But this painting software that I use, Krita, it's open source just like a dough. Uh, there's this amazing feature where you can loop your textures. So you can have these infinite textures and make seamless textures really easily. So first I'll show you how I set up these textures. Then I'll show you what kind of brushes I use and um, my techniques when digital painting. I'm definitely no expert on digital painting, but I've been doing it for a little while, so there might be some things to learn here. After downloading and installing Krita and clicking on New File, you'll be presented with this little template menu. Lucky for us game devs, there's a little uh, texture tab, and within here you find a lot of great texture templates. Uh, I'm sticking to 1K for these textures because they're seamless, so they're meant to be repeated over a large surface and I feel like 1k is more than enough. I might even downscale these textures in an actual game just to get a little bit more optimization. After choosing your resolution, you're gonna find the most important feature to painting seamless textures in Krita right here. This sets up this infinite canvas, meaning that your texture will be repeated uh, on all axes infinitely. Now I do like to switch between the normal texture and the infinite canvas when painting a little bit just to make sure I don't get any weird lines like just on the edge of the texture. And after you set that all up, it's time for the actual digital painting part. Now for people experienced in digital painting, this won't be too much of a challenge. Painting flat textures like this is not that hard. But for those who are new to it, I'd like to share some of my tips. The first thing I'd recommend to anybody starting digital painting is get yourself some reference. Go online and look for some photos of interesting textures or brick patterns. Or even better, go out into the world and find yourself some actual reference. You might look like a bit of an idiot, um, taking pictures of bricks and streets and carpets, but it's a lot of fun actually once you get into it. I find myself in restaurants and cafes, standing next to walls and taking pictures of like wood grains and carpets. All my friends think I'm a bit of an idiot, but it's a lot of fun to have your own little image library of textures you found yourself. Makes for really unique textures. Also definitely look at other artists online, just go to Pinterest and type in hand painted textures. Or look at games like World of Warcraft or Dishonored or League of Legends, they all have great hand painted textures. Don't actually use other people's textures as reference when painting your own, because you'll just stack up this layer of like stylization. I think it's best to take your reference from real world and apply your own style to it. The next tip I'll give is to have a good layer organization. Now you want to set up your base color in the background and then everything you do create it as a separate layer. So for the lines in between bricks for example and the highlights on top and the shadows in the bottom, give it everything its own layer. This way you can easily tweak an aspect of a texture that you don't like or that you would like to have a different color without messing up the rest. This is how I set up my layers for a texture. I start with a base color, just a flat color, and over that I'll start with my line art, defining the pattern of the bricks or whatever. After that I go in with highlights, so shading up the top, then I'll add another layer for shadows, and then I'll go in with a texture. What I mean by texture is something to break up the evenness, so take a nice brush with a lot of grit to it or a pattern, and just brush over the whole thing to give it a bit of roughness. After that it's just detail layers, so I'll go in maybe add a little bit of green for some moss, or a little bit of red on top for some highlights. Or in this case I added some cracks. I find that hand painted textures are never truly flat, meaning that there is some lighting baked into the texture. As you can see on these bricks there is some uh, white light coming from the top and some warm shadow on the bottom left. This really helps make a texture pop and it might not match exactly with the lighting of your scene, but it will look a lot better than just a completely flat texture. So choose a little light source. What I find works great is a blue light at the top so a little bit of blue highlights on the top of your texture and then a warm shadow. So everything that goes darker, pull it a little bit towards red 
So we have this nice warm shadow, blue highlight, gives this nice stylized effect. This technique is used a lot in digital painting. The last tip I'd like to give is to keep your textures rough. Don't go in and make everything super detailed or super sharp. You'd like to have these paint strokes still in there, gives this nice stylized look. If you go in and clean it too much, it becomes like this really clean texture and you lose that nice artsy uh, paint stroke effect that's so beautiful in a lot of game textures. And it helps you to keep learning because the best way to learn is to do it a lot. So make a texture, spend like 30 minutes on it, move on to the next one. Just pump out a lot of textures, you'll learn so much really quickly. So as I said in the beginning of this video, I'll leave a download link to all the textures I've created so far. Uh, use them for whatever you want, there's no copyright or anything on them. Uh, I'll keep updating this pack as I paint more. Right now there's like seven textures or something in there, but they're definitely becoming more. And hopefully a little bit better quality, I'm not quite pleased with my textures yet. But that will do it for this video today. Uh, next video on digital painting will probably be on 3D models and how to paint in Blender. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'd hope to see you then, and bye.